Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Smash Ultimate Tier List with a Twist. I'll be categorizing every Smash character into a tier based on how roastable it is. We've got five labels, as you can see, from raw to charred black in descending order of severity. If a character's raw, it means there's nothing to roast it for. It's awesome. Nobody can talk shit. If it's lightly cooked, it's mostly awesome, but maybe has a flaw or two to get roasted for. Medium rare is half and half. Well done means you're getting mostly roasted, and if it's charred black, oh man, that dude died in a house fire and they didn't find the body for three days there ain't nothing left but ashes we're going in this random order the ssb world tier list has the characters slotted in so you'll be constantly on your toes let that excitement build let's roast number one bayonetta bayonetta's ass and her combo game have one thing in common they don't quit she will chase you all over the damn place like a stalker just whipping back and forth through the air like the ground is hot lava every time she smash attacks i'm distracted by the fact that her clothes melt off and then melt back on again how am i supposed to want to take her stuff when I just want to take her to bed. But at the same time, she's kind of gross. Total butterface. She looks like a librarian stripper who came out of an underperforming erotic novel. And at some point, flexibility becomes less sexy and more creepy. Bayonetta goes medium rare. Number two, Bowser. Damn, Bowser sure deserves hyper armor at 45% when he's already the fastest heavy in the game. Oh, did you side B me off the ledge with a one stock lead? You must have supreme confidence in your ability to not get comebacked, you suicidal coward. Peach will never love you, and you're gonna die alone, probably by your own hand. Is that what you're practicing for? To use your last side B on Peach so you can spend eternity together? As if you'd end up in the same place, you unlovable monster. Enjoy hell, roasted F. Number three, Bowser Jr. I didn't know whether you were a boy or a girl for a while, but that's mostly because nobody gives enough of a shit about you to check, and romantically, that'll never come into play either, because who would ever want to get that close to you? You have dreams of being an artist? So did Hitler. I wish you both equal success. Well done. Number four, Olimar. Olimar's top tier. Olimar's S tier. Olimar is an astronaut who apparently hasn't stretched enough in space because he's still a midget, and he's only top tier because he sends his Pikmin out to get slaughtered in his place. Olimar is a tyrant, a warlord. He's also racist. He judges Pikmin based on their color instead of who they are as individuals. He's a fascist who should be mobbed on Twitter. Hashtag cancel Olimar, hashtag well done. Number five, Captain Falcon. Oh no, you can't fuck with Captain Falcon, bro. He'll sprint over to you at 200 miles per hour and send a flying electric knee into your dumb face. You want to talk shit behind Captain Falcon's back? You're going to get turned around Falcon punched into oblivion. This dude can do a Falcon kick and fly across the ground with pure thigh muscles keeping him afloat. You think you can match that? Try levitating with your glutes. No workout in the world can train you for that. Take a knee or take a knee. Captain Falcon is so raw, he's sushi. They sell Captain Falcon at Japanese restaurants, and he is delicious with miso soup and soy sauce. 10 out of 10 raw. Number six, Cloud. I can't say much about Cloud other than he does not belong here. He's so out of place, at least Snake is distantly related to Mario, apparently, but Cloud literally came out of a vacuum to come slice up a bunch of Pokemon with his oversized sword. I mean, he brings the style. I can't say he's not good at it. I can't say much of anything about Cloud because he just exists, lightly cooked. Number seven, Corrin. So which one of you is the girl avatar, lol? For being a dragon, you'd think Corrin would do a little more than spit bubbles and flap his wings, but I guess he's a bathwater dragon. Like, if you expect badass water dragons to come out of oceans and hidden caves behind waterfalls, you'll see Corrin splashing around in an extra sudsy bubble bath, playing with his little boats and rubber duckies. Of course, that doesn't mean he can't use his absurdly ranged sword attacks to drown you in that tub with him. Corrin gets a medium rare. Number eight, Diddy Kong. Aw, oh, Diddy Kong, how does it feel to be a little nephew who's already somehow passed his prime? Donkey Kong's still going strong, but you? You're washed out, buddy. As a fighter, you've been thrown in the garbage like one of your discarded banana peels that are no longer useful. I mean, you might be throwing the peels, but if you think you're any good in Smash Ultimate, you're the one who's tripping. Well done. Number nine, Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong's still got game, man. Dude has four spikes, four different ways to pile drive you into the abyss, moves with hyper armor that actually deserve hyper armor. I mean, now that you have to pick up Diddy's slack, you're really showing off how effective you can carry burdens, bearing a load of responsibility. Donkey Kong sure cleaned his room today. He's sushi, bro. Number 10, Dr. Mario. It takes a lot of work to get a PhD, man. Mario came from humble beginnings, started out as just a plumber, cleaning Mushroom Kingdom's toilets, plunging Goombas and Koopa shells out of ceramic bowls. This historic account may or may not be accurate. Then he probably got a full ride through medical school for saving the princess like eight times. He's put in the time. 
only ever gets like a kiss on the cheek for his heroic efforts, if that. I feel like he became a doctor to try and treat his chronic blue balls disease. Dr. Mario is a pitiable champion because he's an involuntarily celibate hero. Mostly good, lightly cooked. Number 11, Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt is low tier though. He also doesn't make sense conceptually because he is the duck hunt dog, but he fights alongside a duck that he is not in the process of hunting. Bloodhounds are ugly. Sorry if you have one, but you ain't winning a dog show with it unless the judges all took a clay pigeon to their eye sockets. On the other hand, he has command over a band of bandito desperados, and if that's not gangster for a dog and a duck, I don't know what is. Duck Hunt can pull explosive barrels directly out of his ass. Is that gangster? I err on the side of that's gangster. Medium rare. Number 12, Falco. Falco is a character you could roast literally as well as figuratively and get a decent meal out of it. I've always liked him better than Fox. He's taller, he jumps higher, he's got an attitude about him. I think he commands more respect and authority. His blaster can also make people feel pain. That's a step up. It makes them flinch. In the interest of culinary guidelines, though, I do not suggest eating this bird raw, and so we shall give him the title of lightly cooked so we can add some flavor to the dish. I like Falco, but I also want to eat him. Number 13, Fox. Fox is like Kevin Hart. He's short and fast and popular, and he cheats on his pregnant wife. Imagine staring down Fox's blaster, and he starts shooting, and you don't feel it, but this pool of blood starts forming at your feet, and you're like, what the fuck is going on? Then Fox runs up to you and does a backflip kick real quick, and sends you rocketing into the sky, and you're like, is this how it ends? I'm so confused. Fox is weird, but he's also a borderline flawless persona, so lightly could. Number 14, Ganondorf. Dude, Ganondorf has Captain Falcon's thigh muscles times 10 with how heavy he is and still glide kicking across the screen. You can't step to Ganondorf. He will step on your head with both feet and spike you to an electrified early grave. Ganondorf's got a punch so strong it makes Little Mac piss his boxer shorts and then Doc Lewis has to come over and throw him a towel to clean it up. Lewis, Louie, I'm not 40 years old, it was before my time. Ganondorf is hella raw. Number 15, Greninja. Greninja is top tier, but not when I play him. Ash Greninja is the single most sushi Pokemon in any season of the show. Can you tell I'm trying to make sushi a thing? But yeah, that Battle Bond shit? Greninja is absolute hype every time he steps onto the screen. As far as Smash goes, he's just one of those characters, there's about six or seven of them for me that I just can't do. And Greninja is one of them because he's super fast, but three out of five of his aerials are delayed activation, and that just messes with my expectations because you'd think they'd be all instant since he's a ninja and whatnot. I expect him to have like chic aerials and he does not. Tangentially, do we all just agree to gloss over and pretend we don't know that his tongue is just out all day long? That's nasty. Greninja wraps his tongue around his own neck as a scarf, and his up tilt is a tongue lash, and it's just so weird. I mean, imagine you were fighting a ninja, and by all accounts, he's a legit ninja. Fast, stealthy, cool, sleek. But then after a while, you notice that his dick is just wrapped around his waist like a belt hose, and he can snap it at you like, Wacha! and you're like, this mildly alters my take on what I think of this man, that's Greninja. He's medium rare. Number 16, Ice Climbers. Incest is a hell of a drug. Sakurai has stated he sees the Ice Climbers as lovers, since the game itself doesn't explain their relationship, but I prefer to think of them as sibling lovers. Like, it's hard to imagine them not getting it on, but it's also hard to imagine them not having the same mom. I don't know, is incest still wrong? It's 2019 after all. You ever think about that? You ever think about how it's the year that it is? Sopo is like the worst character in the game, so it's pretty obvious these characters would be nothing without each other. The only thing that keeps them going is their bond of deep sexual sibling love. Well done. Well done is my favorite category because saying it at the end sounds like I'm complimenting myself, which I also am. Number 17, Ike. Ike has been through enough. Match your resume with Ike. See who comes out on top. Ike lost his father and teacher, became the leader of a mercenary company as a teenager that was also instrumental in winning a global war and took revenge on the man who killed his daddy. Ike is the sword-wielding goat. Who are Martha and Lucina or Krom and Roy? They ain't Ike. I like Ike. Ike is sushi supreme. Get him in that raw category. Number 18, Incineroar. Why, hello, waiter. I've got a hankering for more sushi. Might I try your house specialty Incineroar? I hear it's spicy as fuck and packs a goddamn punch. Incineroar is the intercontinental champion of Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, Sinnoh, Unova, Kalos, Alola, and soon to be Galar. Nobody in this roster is more comfortable in a ring, especially because Little Mac is still mopping his pee pee up from earlier. Incineroar is WWE raw. Get in there. Number 19, Inkling. 
You know, I thought Little Mac peed himself, but it might have just been an ink bomb exploding in his pants. I know an ink bomb explodes in my pants whenever I look up Rule 34 Palutena. Inkling is a bratty tween with an attitude problem, and nobody should like her as a person. You may respect her skills as a sprayer of fluid, but otherwise, no, I can't get behind her. She's out here drenching the likes of Ryu and Snake and Ike. No respect whatsoever. Just means she never had a father figure to spank her into shape, and the result is a naive, snot-nosed amateur rebel whose only utility in life is to squirt for the masses. Roasted F. Number 20, Isabel. Isabel might be a rocket burying, pole fishing absolute troll, but she's so adorable it's hard to hate on her. Most people in competition say, I didn't come here to make friends, but Isabel literally came here to make friends. She might be extremely annoying, but her recovery is her playing on a swing set and smiling. If you don't like her, you have no soul. She's like a child, but she's not a child, so I like her, whereas I hate children. Isabel gets lightly cooked. Number 21, Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff gets the short end of the stick when it comes to 90% of girls picking Kirby as their main. I mean, Jigglypuff is also round, also pink, also cute, also has multiple jumps, is a better character overall. I don't get it, man. Is it because she's not unlocked from the start? Maybe that's it? Regardless, Jigglypuff deserves better. Or maybe she doesn't, because playing against one makes you feel like you're trying to attack a deflating balloon animal, she's so goddamn slippery, and the way her forward airs just carry you off the stage, or the way she sings you to sleep and then does a little short hop into your nightmares, dude, that little hop is like staring death in the face while you're paralyzed. Jigglypuff is a fluffy pink demon who will drag you to hell. Lightly cooked. 22, King DDD. King DDD is the shit, unless you're playing online against one who insists on swallowing you and falling off the stage, then he's just shit but effective shit, which is the worst kind. He's one of the trolliest characters for sure, with his sexy, sexy crouch posing for a nude magazine shoot after every kill. I mean, you kinda have to respect his hustle. This is a guy who previously couldn't float and got walloped by Kirby, but then he trained relentlessly, teaching himself how to suck so good until he could actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kirby in the air and still get walloped canonically, but in this game, he's a much better character than Kirby, so props for hard work paying off. King DDD is raw if you don't spend Spam, and charred black if you do, which equates to medium rare. Number 23, King K. Rule. King K. Rule is like the first boss in a Dark Souls game the first time you've ever played Dark Souls. You're not used to the mechanics, you're still figuring things out. This imposing foe looks like an insurmountable obstacle and you label it things like OP and please nerf. Then you learn how to play the game and you're like, why the hell did I ever struggle with this matchup? King K. Rule is a noob killer, but that's all he can kill. He's the last giant, he's the asylum demon, he's Dragon Rider, an intimidating joke, a boogeyman in the light of day. But also I like him, he's fun to play as, medium rare. Number 24, Kirby, LOL Kirby. If I have to say one positive thing about Kirby, he attracts the ladies. Every girl wants to play as him. I've known six girls who play Smash. They all main Kirby, every single one. I try to wean them off him because Kirby is a crutch character and you can't improve your fundamentals as well with a character that is not only demonstrably worse than most others, but also has shortcuts to good recovery and edge guards via multiple jumps and therefore teaches inconsistently bad habits, but they're like, LOL, I just play for fun. You take this way too seriously and I can't argue with that. The problem is many Kirby mains, not all, but not none, regardless of their gender, are addicted to the fucking B button, and it's real goddamn annoying to play against them, especially in four player modes, because they either suck someone up and then spam their B move, or they just fly above the crowd and down B, or they use up B as their primary attack for some reason, or the most annoying of them all, they charge their hammer at the edge of the stage and then just leap into the crowd and pray for a distracted hit. Some people play Kirby well, or as well as they can, but there's something about his moveset that encourages brainlessness, and because of all my past experiences with Kirby, I have to hate him with a mild passion at least hot enough to make him well done. Number 25, Link. Hey, how about you put that damn bomb away? Must be nice to have all your edge guarding capabilities assigned to one button. This is why Link never should have been introduced to technology. He abuses it. He's like a little kid with a smartphone now, just detonating bomb after bomb like he's playing Candy Crush to make his parents stop fighting. But they won't stop fighting because they hate each other and they want a divorce. But he's caught in the middle as the anchor, tying both of them down to the bottom of the drowning sea as they struggle desperately for the air of freedom, only to take more water into their lungs. So you just keep pressing down B, Link. Keep on playing with your little devices and ignore your family's muffled underwater screams until their spirits finally leave their bloated corpses and float up to the surface. Roast it, AF. Number 26, Little Mac. 
Damn, he is still standing in that puddle of piss. Doc Lewis is already looking for other boxers to train. Little Mac is a disgrace. You probably knew 20 minutes ago that this was going to be a major roast with all the jabs I've been giving him leading up to this. Little Mac is about as comfortable in the air as a skydiver with no parachute. His aerial attacks are so absurdly pathetic, I watch him do them, and it's like watching a toddler try to swim for the first time after you've thrown him in the pool with no plans to jump in after him. All he knows are smash and dash attacks with completely undeserved hyper armor. Is he wearing cement shoes? Then why is he still so fast? If his legs are that strong, he should take up kickboxing. Maybe then he'd have an aerial attack worth a damn. Watching Little Mac try to recover with an up B and failing after getting gimped off the stage is one of Smash's greatest joys. Also, he shouldn't even have a grab. How do you grab people with boxing gloves on? There's no grip. Why do we need to mash out of a Little Mac grab like, oh, I can't escape, he's holding on tight. Little Mac is a child who wets the bed every night in his yellow stained boxer shorts and it's enough of a problem that he's not allowed to go to sleepovers. Charred Black. Number 27, Lucario. Lucario was so much fun to play as. Just kidding, I hate him. No amount of shiny aura is going to save zero range attacks from a floaty character for me. Lucario is a walking strobe light with no density, hoping you're distracted enough by the pretty colors to let him crawl up your ass with all his attacks. If you're not in grab range, you're not in Lucario range. And I'm aware pro players like him, and he's considered high tier and whatever, but not to me. To me, he's well done tier. His only redeeming quality is the fact that he looks cool, and I like him as a fighter conceptually, but I I wish he played way differently. Number 28, Lucas. Oh, you know Lucas, the bane of online existence, the fire, ice, and thunder lord of bullshit, the sniveling toddler of elemental spam. This is why I hate kids, man. They just run around acting like they can beat up literal dragons and aliens and heroes when they don't know shit. The hell is Lucas gonna be like when he's 30? I don't wanna meet that guy. Can probably summon a PK freeze instantaneously wherever he wants. That's an unbeatable edge guard game right there. Hey Lucas, why don't you get some goddamn irises? Your eyes are 100% pupil and it's fucking creepy. I keep waiting for your little snake yo-yo thing to poke its head out of one of your eye sockets and hiss. Your head is full of empty darkness and I feel like pouring salt around the perimeter of my room. Roasted aft. Number 29, Luigi. When did Luigi get so weird? Have you seen how he fights? I remember when he was just the taller sidekick brother who can jump higher, but now it's like he's been through some kind of severe trauma. Remember when he literally got murdered in one of the trailers for Smash Ultimate? Maybe that did it. Luigi looks like he sees a therapist twice a week to talk about his inferiority complex, and I'm also getting another kind of vibe from him lately. Does Daisy know that Luigi is definitely gay? The third part of his jab is attacking with his asshole. His poltergust means he excels at sucking, and the way the announcer says Luigi's name when you select him makes me feel like he knows something. Listen to it next time. He's like, Luigi. That's the tone you use to refer to someone after you walked into their dressing room and saw something you weren't supposed to. Maybe that's why Waluigi isn't in Smash. He threatened to come out and expose him and they couldn't take the scandal. Is this a roast? Am I roasting him right now? Let's just call it medium rare to avoid drawing too much attention to an obviously delicate subject. Number 30, Mario. Dude, what's Mario gonna say when he finds out? Obviously, he's gonna support his little brother, and this is nothing to be ashamed of per se, although if he's been lying to Daisy this whole time, that shit's gonna hit the fan sooner or later. Maybe she'll switch teams for a while, I could see it. Anyway, Mario is Mario. You all know Mario. He's the most heroic virgin the world has ever seen. His wedding night is gonna be off the hook, though, I promise you that. He's such a tragedy, but he's also so admirable. I can't give him anything darker than a lightly cooked. Number 31, Marth. Man, remember when Marth was on top? One of the kings of Melee, chain-grabbing people up and down Final Destination, but now he's been usurped by some young upstart named Lucina, and even Roy is better than him now. Roy is better than Marth! Who could have seen this day coming? Now that Ike is the new pretty blue-haired boy in town, Marth really has no place in this game anymore. Maybe he should take his sword to a forge and have them upgrade more than just the tip. Well done. Number 32, Lucina. Oh hey, it's the more relevant sword wielder. Lucina moves around the battlefield smooth as silk. Her acrobatic sword swings are done with beauty and grace, and she can edge guard like nobody's business with her terrific recovery. Marth used to be raw, but now Lucina is raw, and Marth is some trash, as we've already established. Number 33, Mega Man. 
Oh look, it's an Astro Boy knockoff, he said, daring the comments to come after him. I don't know why they call him Mega Man when he has the face and body of a robotic child. Is this some reverse Shazam bullshit? I have no attachment to the Mega Man universe or lore whatsoever or to this character, so I don't care. Mega Man is a dumb-faced android who spams Leaf Shield like a bitch and recovers by jumping off of a dog, which is probably animal abuse. Mega Man is like Pinocchio, except he'll never be a real boy. I hope Dr. Light takes him apart every night and molests his individual parts one at a time before putting them all back together. Roasted aff. Number 34, Meta Knight. Nothing like a short sword to make you worthless as a sword wielder. Meta Knight is like Kirby, but sleek, but also like Kirby in that he's light and non-threatening and therefore a poser. Half his attacks are technically recovery, so if he misses one in the air, he ends up looking like an absolute moron as he falls to his demise, so that's cool. Medium rare. Number 35, Mewtwo. The circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. This coming from a mid-tier. He should have done a little more with the gift of life, I guess. Mewtwo is a bouncy little psychic-type Pokemon who springs around the stage whipping his tail back and forth when he should just be dominating the other characters' minds and making them kill themselves. Instead, he lets himself get bodied by the likes of Pichu and Jigglypuff, which in Pokemon canon would be very embarrassing. Mewtwo has fallen. Medium rare. Number 36, Me Brawler. Dude, if you're gonna dress up in a full Yoshi costume, just play Yoshi. Same goes for everything relating to already in here characters. Me Brawler is the most buffed character in Smash Ultimate history, but he's still just all right. He's only as cool as you make him, but if you make him cool, then damn. You know, we'll give him a lightly cook. Number 37, Me Gunner. Fuck me, Gunner. You can't make me, Gunner, cool because at the end of the day, you're just spamming her ridiculously long-ranged and lingering forward smash. The reason me, Gunner, is a chick by default while Brawler and Swordfighter are bros is because Sakurai understands that she's nothing more than a low-rent, ugly Samus who isn't worth a full space suit or even a sleek bodysuit. She's gross. If she went zero suit, I'd hold my eyes over an open flame until they seared my retinas to blindness and made them charred black like I just made me, Gunner, bitch. Number 38, Me Sword Fighter. Oh look, it's Discount Link. The Me characters in general are just knockoffs, which is the point, I guess, but also I can't imagine it's very good for players' self esteem, knowing that when they make Me's that look like themselves, they're assigning their likeness to cheap knockoff garbage status. Like, if you make a Me that looks like you, and you play one of the Me fighters, you're trash by association because it's your face on them, you know? It's like wearing a superhero Halloween costume. Like, you know that by comparison, you are not living up to your inspirations and never will because you're worthless as a person. I mean, no offense, but well done. Number 39, Mr. Game & Watch. Oh my god, I am gonna char this dude so black and the shame of it is you won't even be able to tell. Game & Watch is the least colorful character on the roster and in my opinion, the biggest insult to play against. He walks around a frame at a time acting like he belongs in 2019 when all he does is teach children to gamble with his side B. He can tell how much I hate him, I'm convinced, because when I get him in random, I get like three ones in a row and no nines to speak of. If I'm gonna gamble, I'll go to a casino and win money, not waste my luck on this time capsule come to life. Game & Watch is retro before retro was retro, which means he existed before we made technology good, which means don't bother, he's a piece of shit from a bygone era that should stay buried in the past where it belongs. Roast it aft here, get your 2D ass in there. Number 40, Ness. Ness? Another small child, only this one attacks with yo-yos and baseball bats just to really hammer home the point that you're getting your ass beat by a third grader? Why don't you pick your nose and chew bubblegum while you're at it? I'm glad your dad left you. Children are the worst. You're going right next to Lucas. I apply all his roasting to you also. Number 41, Pac-Man. Pac-Man is like Mega Man in that I don't care. When he dies, I hope his tombstone has a coin slot installed you can stick a quarter in to hear his death sound play whenever you want. Also, you have the ugliest wife in gaming. She's just you with lipstick and eyelashes. That's gross, man. Whenever he misses a grab, he gets this sad look in his eyes because he realizes he's a failure and his life for the last 40 years has been one big rat maze he'll never get out of. Well done, Tyr. Number 42, Palutena. How do you roast someone who's already searing hot? Tss, ow. Palutena pulls off that long green hair like few can, and as a literal goddess, she is a goddess. The way she neutral airs is so elegant, she wants you to see it like five or six times in a row for good measure. Naming your attacks and shouting them every time you do them is a cliche at this point. Like, your opponents might have a harder time dodging your explosive flame if you would stop warning them. Explosive flame! Explosive flame! Why can't I hit anyone? Explosive flame! How do they know? Explo- Hey, come back! Explosive- And she's dead. 
Palutena gets lightly cooked, which is like getting a tan, which might make her even more attractive, although her skin is already translucent. Number 43, Peach. I mean, I never would have expected Peach to get it done in Smash, but she's been consistently one of the top five characters in like every game, floating around and attacking with her ass nonstop. Don't tell Peach to back that ass up unless you want her to speak at your funeral. After they bury you, she'll come back to the graveyard at night, pluck you out of your grave like a turnip, and toss you into a dumpster. Her dress is so big and flowy, she can keep a frying pan and a golf club and a tennis racket in there. She wearing cargo pants underneath that? I've never liked Peach that much as a person, but she fights like a Super Saiyan princess in this game. However, she's still getting lightly cooked because only one sister gets to be raw in my tier list. Number 44, Daisy. That's right, fellas, the better sister is here and ready to be exactly like Peach in every way except prettier with a better personality. I wish Mario lore wasn't so vague because some things say Peach and Daisy are sisters, some say friends, some say cousins, but I say sisters even though that makes no sense when they rule different kingdoms. Still sounds right though. Daisy in her red and black costume is actually drool worthy. Peach might be a princess, but Daisy is a queen as far as I'm concerned. She's raw. Number 45, Pichu. You little shit. How dare you be better than Pikachu, according to everyone but Esam? That's disrespectful. Pikachu is your evolution. I'd laugh if they added Raichu to Smash as a heavy and both Pikachu and Pichu just wipe the floor with him, but back to the point, Pichu is too short and every attack sails over his head. His combo game is stupid in that I just roll my eyes incredulously as I watch a tiny electric rodent domestically abuse my character nonstop. Obviously, he's the lightest fighter in the game, but if I can't hit that bitch because he's having a seizure in the air every two seconds and jolts, spurting at me. The fact that Pichu's Thunder Jolt can stop anything is nonsense. I do a Ganondorf Falcon Kick and I'm utterly halted in place by a tiny electrical current. It's embarrassing. Turns out Breath of the Wild would have been a much shorter game if Pichu just went up to Calamity Ganon like, Pichu! Well, game over. Link, turns out you were not needed. Sorry to wake you. Take your shirt back off and go to sleep. I just hate that Pichu is so good, which means he's probably raw, but I refuse to give him the classification, so go into medium rare, you godforsaken child prodigy. Number 46, Pikachu. And you would have been so raw, too, if it weren't for that meddling Pichu. First month of Ultimate, people were saying, hey, Pikachu seems like he might be the best character or one of the best characters. Now it's all Pichu this and Pichu that. And the fact that they aren't related must make it even worse, because it's like you can't even be proud to be Pichu's father because you aren't. Pichu's father is a deadbeat who let his baby son get conscripted into a warfare fight club because he saw the dollar signs. This Pikachu won't even see those earnings. I'm only gonna lightly cook you because I feel bad for you. You can't even fit inside the shadow you're standing in. Number 47, Pit. Pit is such a fresh-faced little naive boy, it's gross. I never played Kid Icarus, so bear that in mind, but he feels like a 12-year-old. I don't know how old he's supposed to be. Thousands of years since he's an angel? If he became an angel at 12, something terrible must have happened. I smile at the thought. I sincerely hope they don't do any romantic bullshit between Pit and Palutena like they do Link and Zelda, because Palutena is anciently mature, and Pit looks like he's never had a boner. Am I wrong? Picture Pit with a boner. You can't, but feel free to keep trying, you pervert. Pit gets medium rare. He's too basic for well done. Number 48, Dark Pit. Oh, what's this now, an evil 12-year-old? What's he gonna do, put silly string in my toothpaste? Dark Pit at least looks cooler. He's probably had one or two boners. Maybe he's touched a boob, I don't know. Maybe he grazed Palutena's side boob while walking past her and was like, ah, I'm sorry. But then he also went and told his friends he grabbed hella titties. Dark Pit gets lightly cooked. Wouldn't want him saddled next to regular uncool Pit. Number 49, Piranha Plant. Have you tried Neutral Bee? It's pretty sick. Piranha Plant's got more attitude than most human characters and appears to take sweet joy in biting and poisoning opponents and watching them slowly die. He's like a weed you can't get rid of in your garden. It just keeps coming back no matter how much weed killer you pour on it because Piranha Plant is a chunky boy and his up B can take him across state lines. I'm a fan of him actually. Some people think he's low or low mid tier, but the lag of his aerials is offset by his damage output and persistence. I think he's raw. Number 50, Pokemon Trainer. All right, so there's an icon for Pokemon Trainer, but there's also individual icons for Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard, so I guess I'm gonna judge the trainer himself. Well, first of all, you want a female Pokemon trainer. You just do. Her voice isn't annoying like the male one doing, let's go, Ivysaur, Charizard, come out. Pokemon trainer is worthless as a person. They don't give any orders or suggestions. They're just like, Squirtle, win. 
If Pokemon training is that easy, how has Ash never been a champion? I'm Team Ash, by the way, for the record. He's literally a battle genius when he actually knows the relevant information. Like, yeah, he'll do dumb things, but especially when he rematches people, he becomes Pokemon trainer Einstein and does shit I'd never think of in a thousand years. Anyway, Pokemon trainer is not Ash, and therefore is just a brat who doesn't even participate beyond switching his team out at random times. He gets a well done. Number 51, Squirtle. I didn't know Squirtle's shell was indestructible, but apparently that's the case. The dude blocks a fully charged Samus shot by pressing side B like, bitch, you ain't no Blastoise, you ain't no Torkoal, you ain't Turtonator, you ain't Lapras, you ain't Torterra, you ain't Shelter or Cloister, you do not have a shell that strong. Squirtle is just a tiny combo master and it's so annoying, medium rare. Number 52, Ivysaur. Ivysaur is clearly the most experienced Pokemon in the bunch. His aerials are insanely strong, one of the best spikes in the game, and one of the strongest up airs, too. Neutral air has great cover, back air outranges so much, those vines and pollen explosions are just too much to handle sometimes. This is starting to sound like a real tier list breakdown, so let me add that he makes me wish we didn't start cracking down on pesticide use. Ivysaur gets lightly cooked. He's one of the very few characters that I like but don't use, so it's a double-edged sword. Number 53, Charizard. Charizard is just a dumpster fire who over relies on side B flare blitz to get kills he doesn't deserve. It's funny to encounter a side B spamming Charizard when he's doing it badly. If you see it coming, you can just shield or jump, and it's got tremendous end lag for a reason. But if he spams it up close, as soon as a lucky one hits you, it becomes a lot less funny. It artificially raises the stakes and lowers your acceptable margin for error without being worthwhile of respect. That's why whenever I encounter someone who was like, LOL, just get good, in the face of spam and troll of any kind, I can't help but think that's a stupid reductionist way to view it. Just adapt, bro. Oh, so I'm just supposed to be A-OK -okay with honor being thrown out the window? Terrible sportsmanship isn't terrible. Just get used to people sucking the fun out of video games. Why would you ever complain about having less fun with a game you bought because people are assholes? That's like if someone starts harassing you in real life and you tell your friend and they're like, just adapt, bro. Why are you complaining about someone being annoying? That's life. Oh, you're right. I should just accept all negative experiences and never lament them ever. Also, we should never hold people accountable for their conduct because what would that accomplish besides a better fucking society? Charizard gets roasted aft because he embodies all this for me. Number 54, Ridley. Ridley is the literal manifestation of not being fat, just big boned, because he's not heavy. He's like in 12th to 16th place in terms of highest weight. Ridley weighs less than Samus. Did you fucking hear me? Ridley weighs less than Samus by one point. When Ridley and Samus step on a scale, Samus weighs more in the spacesuit, which must be dense as a motherfucker. Zero Suit Samus weighs one point heavier than Kirby, but when that suit comes on, outweighs a goddamn dragon. But I guess Ridley isn't much of a dragon. Ridley is a piece of shit because all he ever wants is to side B you off the screen and probably kill both of you in the process. He has no self-preservation instincts, which makes him extremely annoying. Also, since he's not heavy, how come his wings only get to flap like twice before he's like, oh man, I give up. What are they even for? You know you're a shitty purple dragon when even Spyro has stronger wings. Roasted aff. Number 55, Rob. Rob? More like Rob. R-A-W-B? This is more of a written joke. Rob is the only character that doesn't appear in his own video game, but because he's an accessory, that also means he's the only character that kind of exists in real life. If anybody's gonna become sentient and know they're in a video game, it's Rob. I keep waiting for him to stop fighting and just stare right through the TV screen at the player like, Help me. Get me out of here. I don't know what he sounds like. I don't think he talks. He doesn't need to, though, because Rob is like if Wally was manufactured as a warbot. He's got gyros, mega lasers, thruster firepower, rotary arms, and he can come back from anywhere on the screen. Robots don't eat sushi, but this robot is sushi. Number 56, Robin. Yo, have you seen Robin's side B? That shit is fire. <laughs> Female Robin is fine as hell, while male Robin is just meh as a character. Like, female Robin has the looks, the style, the charm, the voice, she's super raw. But male Robin has unremarkable moves and a degradation mechanic that sucks for this game. So because I'd put male Robin as medium rare and female Robin as raw, we have to compromise on lightly cooked. Number 57, Rosalina. 
Rosalina is still the odd woman out to me. I have never accepted her as a member of the Mario universe, and I just hate how she plays in Smash. Slow, floaty, is a tyrant like Olimar who relies on the sacrifice of her minions, though at least not as many. Rosalina is heartless and cruel. These Lumas have been brainwashed, and they're probably retarded or something, so she is taking advantage of mental disabilities to further her own destructive ends, and you guys still like her? No way, man, this is evil. Put her in well done territory. Number 58, Roy. I miss the good old days when Roy was nobody's boy. Apparently it only takes one match against a spamming troll using a character for me to start to hate that character, but Roy's still fine. Better than Marth at least. Better than Krom too now, depending on who you ask. This breed of Fire Emblem characters gets on people's nerves, and I understand why. It's all short hop forward errors from like half of them. It's fast paced yet basic, and so not that fun to play against. But I used to main Krom in the early days, so I'm used to it. Roy just gets lightly cooked, and I might borrow his sword to help me with that. Number 59, Krom. Krom is like someone who's trying to become a YouTuber now. He has no idea how oversaturated the place he stepped into already is. Krom gets on stage like, I'm here, what's up guys? And nobody even notices because they're too busy paying attention to all the other Fire Emblem characters that have already established themselves. Even Corrin is like, isn't it a little late for you to be doing this? She just got 100,000 subscribers, so she thinks she's a big dog now and she doesn't want anyone following in her footsteps even though the place was oversaturated when she started out too, so she's being undeservedly territorial. Damn, Corrin reminds me of someone. Krom is well-meaning though, and he's one of the best Fire Emblem characters as a character, like as a person, anyway. So we shouldn't give him too much grief. I'll just lightly cook him too. Number 60, Ryu. You guys tired yet? I'm doing this whole video in one take to maintain momentum. Imagine how I feel. Ryu has negative range. It feels like his punches and kicks travel backwards inside his own body. I can never get close enough to actually hit people. Jigglypuff's arrest has more range than Ryu's anything but Hadouken. My favorite part about Ryu, aside from the fact that I can't control what direction he's facing, why do they even program a back air for him, is the fact that I will oftentimes do spin kicks and fireballs and sure you can that I'm not trying to do because I'm just trying to do a landing aerial into a down tilt or something, and the game recognizes the directional inputs as special move inputs to make it like Street Fighter, which no one asked for. I love spinning backwards right off the stage and setting up my own edge guard when I'm just trying to do a damn combo. Ryu is well done. Number 61, Ken. Ken is just Ryu, but prettier, medium rare. Number 62, Samus. My, but that bodysuit is proportional. If it had like a retractable crotch slit, I wouldn't even need you to take the suit off. In four player matches, Samus is pretty much contractually obligated to stand on the edge and charge her charge shot, then fire her charge shot, then charge her charge shot, then fire her charge shot, then run in and miss a couple kicks and take 30% damage before retreating back to the edge to charge her charge shot, then fire her charge shot. Her moves just have way too much coverage. Forward air lights the whole screen on fire. Up smash blows up the whole platform. Up tilt has like three legs worth of range. I do like her. I like playing as her. And I really like Samus as a woman, which is why I'm lightly cooking her because of that campy shit. Otherwise she'd be raw. Number 63, Dark Samus. I don't understand what Dark Samus is, but if it's just a kinkier Samus with more fetishes, that's still not a plus for me because I'm scared. Also, those veins and stuff on her suit better not be on her actual body too. I'm not having intercourse with a human blood clot. Dark Samus is just a distortion of the original, like a once beautiful painting that has been warped by moisture damage. She, it, gets roasted af. I hate knockoffs, unless they're better, like Dark Pit, that's the exception. Number 64, Sheik. Dude, people in my Smash waifu ranking told me that when Zelda transforms into Sheik, she technically becomes a guy, and I was talking all this shit in the video about like, ooh, you want a Zelda in the streets, but a Sheik in the sheets. Oh no! Zelda needs to introduce her magic to the trans community. Being able to just transform into the opposite sex in less than two seconds seemed pretty groundbreakingly convenient. That's not even a joke, really. That would just help. Certainly lower risk than going through a surgery and regretting it later, like some of them do. I am implore the scientists of the world to start doing research on Hyrule magic. Sheik as a character though is absolute ass. It takes about 12 hits to do 0.1% damage, half her special moves are useless, she has zero knockback, I keep saying her because I'm still in denial. It's Danganronpa all over again. You want to play as a real ninja? Go Greninja. Tongue and all, he's a better pick. Roasted af, Sheik is bottom tier. Number 65, Shulk. I don't know what Xenoblade Chronicles is. I also don't know what the fuck kind of a name Shulk is. He's a good swordsman. I assume his sword is the Xenoblade. That thing's pretty sweet. Comes with tons of different arts. I just wish Shulk didn't have a Beach Boy costume because it makes me uncomfortable. Do you strap your sword to your bare back? That must chafe. 
Shulk is such a baby face, he looks younger than Lucas. The two could be related, honestly. Every time I hear backslash, I expect it to be followed by a PK fire. Shulk is fine. He's not raw. I'll just give him a lightly cook. Number 66, Simon. I think this is what Hitler wanted. Simon is built like a pile of rocks. Have you seen those muscles up close? You could break a sword on his biceps, but you'll never get close enough because he never stops throwing shit. Simon is like a psychotic girlfriend during a big fight, just picking up everything in arm's reach and flinging it at you like a deranged monkey. All that's missing from his playstyle is a continuous soundbite of hysterical shrieking. Everything he has is designed to keep you at range because he's used to fighting vampires, and if they bite you once, it's game over, man. Just remember the golden rule of side B, neutral B, down B, forward smash. That's all I see people do online. I can't stand playing as or playing against these characters, but at least Simon is cool. I'll give him medium rare. Number 67, Richter. Nah, I'm not on board with a young anime boy version of Simon. This guy's got no business being here. He's just chick bait, and you can tell. His victory pose is specifically designed to induce fangirlism. It's like the dude version of a Japanese girl making the peace sign. I can't play as him with a straight face. I don't accept him. He looks like his nose bleeds every time a cute girl says hi to him. Richter's a fucking nerd. Well done. Number 68, Snake. It's so funny that Snake is in Smash, it really is. Especially because he's like mute in this game. So you've got a grizzled war veteran special ops gorilla silently using tactics and military grade weaponry to systematically blow up Jigglypuff. Didn't think I'd ever see Pichu taking RPGs and mortars to the face. These guys should be in bits and pieces scattered across the stage. Snake is hilarious conceptually, but he's one of the most oppressively annoying characters to play against, and I don't have the neocortex level cerebral brain power to learn him either. So many inputs, so many traps to set. But at least edge guarding is easier than ever with Nikita missiles that can fly anywhere, deactivate and reactivate at the right time to avoid attacks, and pretty much wall out most non-teleporting characters. Snake is a bitch when it comes down to it. I have to go medium rare. Number 69, Sonic. Your movie is going to be amazing for all the wrong reasons. Sonic has seen a steep drop in quality games the past 20 years, so he's using his association with Mario to try and bolster his street cred. He's a mooch. He's a has-been. He's like Ted from the Seth MacFarlane movies. He used to be all famous and popular with children back in the day, and now he just snorts cocaine with porn actresses getting high on nostalgia. Maybe a resurgence is in the works, though. The Sonic team has announced development on the next mainline game, and maybe Team Sonic Racing won't be garbage. We'll see. I still go roasted aft. Just the existence of your movie is enough to put you there. Number 70, Toon Link. The worst link by a cartoon mile. Your bombs don't hurt you if you throw them at your own feet, but they hurt you if you hold on to them too long. Do you even logic, bro? Toon Link's lack of a lingering neutral air kick is his single biggest sore spot for me. He doesn't have any hitboxes to throw out and land with. Also, watching him run could probably trigger epilepsy. Toon Link is one of the most unnecessary additions Smash ever added. Well done. Number 71, Villager. I didn't know Smash had a special needs division. The kid's out here tossing bowling balls off cliffs and riding explosive rockets. Where's his chaperone? His victory pose is him catching beetles with a net. Did he murder his parents? Where are they? Why is nobody doing something? Just be careful, he seems easily upset. I'm putting him in the roasted aft tier where he can't hurt anyone but himself and other people in the same tier who I also don't care about. Number 72, Wario. Wario's actually super good in this game. If he had more range, he'd be top tier easily. That said, he's disgusting. He's fat and gross, and he eats garbage and farts people off the screen. It's not pretty. He needs a bigger shirt. But I like playing as him, medium rare. Number 73, We Fit Trainer. We Fit Trainer just wants everyone to be healthy and exercise so they can be in prime physical condition when she murders them in cold blood with a soccer ball she pretends is a volleyball. Like Kirby in DDD, We Fit Trainer has mastered the art of deep breathing, only she uses it to buff herself like nobody's business and jog after her opponents who should be running for their goddamn lives. Do you ever think about how scary We Fit Trainer is? She's like a mannequin come to life who recites uplifting quotes and gives her victims instructions on how to be in the best shape for a brutal death. When she says, salute the sun, she means on your way to heaven. Imagine Wee Fit Trainer chasing after you with a knife, but as you're sprinting your ass off trying to get away, she's just maintaining a brisk jogging pace waiting for you to tire yourself out. This is prime horror fodder. I can't believe no one's played into this yet. Wee Fit Trainer is actually raw though. She deserves it. Number 74, Wolf. 
Wolf is back with a vengeance to become better than his Fox and Falco counterparts. I mildly main Wolf, in addition to like 30 other characters. I usually just choose random online in battle arenas with friends, but when Wolf comes up, I'm like, hell yeah. His blaster makes Fox's blaster look like a nerf gun, and his aerials make Fox's aerials look like nerf aerials, because that makes sense. Wolf is just a badass. He's got combos, a way too good projectile, his side B is a threatening anti-edge guard tool. He can't recover well, he can barely make it back after a runoff neutral air, but his stage game is impressive. Fox and Falco were lightly cooked, but Wolf is raw. Number 75, Yoshi. Yoshi's an acrobatic little maniac. That dude flies around the stage wiggling his tail and headbutting people with large amounts of enthusiasm. This reminds me they could pretty much move Little Mac up a couple tiers if they just gave his side B hyper armor in the air like Yoshi's double jump has. Then not only could he recover, but he could land against anti-air attacks. But don't though, I like Little Mac being trash. Anyway, back to Yoshi. Yoshi's fine. The end. Lightly cooked. Number 76, Young Link. Yo, can someone just snatch that boomerang from him and just bury it six feet underground? Every Young Link I play acts like their family will be murdered if they don't always follow boomerang with a flaming arrow shot, even when it doesn't make sense. Young Link is super annoying to fight because he has no punish window to speak of. None of his moves have any lag at all. He's always fishing for a projectile confirmant, a forward error or something. Young Link's sword is made of styrofoam. This must have been before they let him use a real one. So he relies on peppering people with projectiles until they're at like 150% so we can get an errant smash attack or aerial. Despite me complaining, Young Link is really fun to play as. It's a playstyle that gets your juices flowing. If you want a fast character that isn't all over the place out of control, Young Link is solid. He's also the only child character I don't hate. Lightly cooked. Number 77, Zelda. Short hop, sweet spot, forward or back air on tall characters. That works, nothing else really does. Zelda is someone who will press down B when she feels threatened, and because she sucks, she feels threatened at all times. Reflecting projectiles is something many characters can do, but with Zelda, that's like her whole thing, so she not very good. Elegant though, for what that's worth, which is not much, medium rare. Number 78, Zero Suit Samus. Last character on our list, Zero Suit Samus, waifu extraordinaire. They should give her a costume called Birthday Suit Samus. I'll pick that one every time. Zero Suit Samus isn't as good as she was in the last game, but she still looks good doing it. For some reason, I always get hit by the fire hitbox of her side B, but when I use her and try to side B, people get hit by like one electric part and take 2% damage and escape, so that's not fair. She's fast, and when you jump around with her, you feel light as a feather. Because you are, because she dies at 80% a lot. But it's fine, because she's still sushi af, and that's a great note to end a video on. Well, that's gonna do it for this long-ass video. I hope you enjoyed it. You can check out my Smash Ultimate waifu ranking if you haven't. If you're new to the channel, stick around, because I'm a fantastic beast that you know where to find already. Become a channel member for exclusive Discord access and stream badges and all that. Follow me on Twitter at sunburnedalbino, and I'll see you guys next time.